Well, good morning, friends. I thought because of the way this battle at 166 megahertz wound up at the end of the day, having gone through two motherboards and all these chips, that I'd start out with a quick intro introducing our friends, Intel Pentium, Pentium MMX, Pentium MMX in a plastic format, which is the MMX that I benched along with the regular Pentium, a Cyrex 6x86166, and our friend AMD K6166. Um, these were benched on two motherboards, and I'll begin the video talking about the Gigabyte uh, GA5S-MM and the trials and tribulations I had with that. In the end of the day, I had to basically chuck it. Um, I still have it. I didn't chuck it, but swapped it out for my Asus TX97LE motherboard. And as I'm working on my video edits this morning, I thought, well, I should let everyone know exactly what happened. So this is my intro. These are the performers. I'm going to talk a little bit about each of the motherboards. Uh, if you want to jump straight to the benchmarking and the actual results, there is an index in this video. Go ahead and jump to about the 11 some minute mark and we'll go on from there. But again, thanks for joining the, what turned out to be somewhat underwhelming battle at 166 megahertz. I think the reason it was underwhelming and I'll recap at the end of the video is that basically even a Voodoo 2 is overpowering for these chips. Uh, probably a more realistic uh, battle would be at uh, 233 to 300 megahertz. But that might be coming up in the future. In the meanwhile, enjoy and thanks for joining us. Here's a look at the motherboard on the test bench. I'll point out a few things. We're primarily using the onboard SIS AGP chipset video and we have added a Voodoo 2 PCI card to that. Just one Voodoo 2. Uh, there's no need to do the SLI because we're extraordinarily CPU limited as we are and running these benchmarks. One stick, a 64 megabyte of RAM. Uh, we are using a USB mouse with standard keyboard. I split my audio to my recording and to speakers. And then of course we have the pass through loop on the video for the Voodoo 2. Because all we're doing is swapping out the CPUs, we have a stack of CPUs, we got the Pentiums, we got the Cyrex. Right now the AMD is in it right now. And I just finished benchmarking the AMD. I've kept it fairly simple. All I have to do is basically just pop off this heatsink, which is just kind of floating on top of the chip. It's held down by the pressure and the stickiness of the heat seek paste, the conductive paste, and it's really easy just to pop that out of our socket seven. And then once I get that out, I'll get that cleaned up off to the side. And our next victim, so to speak, there's our AMD. Our next victim, so to speak, will, will be our Cyrex chip. And this one will run at a core of 3.5 volts. So I'll get on the motherboard schematics and I will adjust the block. And this is switch four through eight, which will let me change the core voltage in here. It'll keep the same stepping, the same frequency and the same stepping as the other chips. These are all running on a 66 um, megahertz by 2.5. So. That will go in our socket there. And we have enough heatsink paste left that all I really need to do is just put that on there. Make sure it's sitting flat. And this does get hot enough that you really do have to have at least a small heatsink with these chips. This Cyrex chip will probably get the warmest <clears throat> pardon me the AMD chip got really warm yesterday and not not you know warm enough to be of concern but but this little tiny heatsink 
down the road if I was running that AMD chip, and we'll see how the Cyrex works, that probably wouldn't be the heat sink I would keep. I'd get something a little beefier, and I do have some heat sinks back here that came on some of these Pentium boards. I'd probably put something this size with a fan on it and lock it in place. Just something a little beefier. So, I will go ahead and adjust the voltage for this and then we'll fire it up and get our last round of benchmarking done. Double checking the motherboard schematics, I did misspeak. The, um, the AMD K6 166 and the Pentium 166s are running at 66 megahertz bus at a 2.5 for 166. The Cyrex which is a PR166 Plus, is actually running at 133 megahertz. So that's a 66 megahertz bus at a two multiplier. So made sure I got that right, got my core voltage. The core voltage on the Cyrex maxes out what the motherboard will support at 3.5. So we're gonna fire this up and cross our fingers. I am not a huge fan of having so much voltage. And it's working. And I apologize for the flicker. The flicker. It's because of my fluorescent light system. I'll be, of course, recording the benchmark through my video capture. But hopefully she'll boot right up into Windows. 98 and we'll uh, we'll start the benchmarking So while the benchmark for the Cyrex chip is proceeding I Want to make a mention of a change I had to make here. I Know that when I originally bought this motherboard I bought it and I bought the Cyrex chip to use with it now I beefed up the heat sink this morning because the other one, which was much lighter, I'll show you. This one, which was much lighter and thinner, was, it was just blazing hot. I've been adjusting the core voltage on the Cyrex. I know I have the front side bus and the clock multiplier correct, but it, Windows 98 refused to work correctly with the built-in a GPSIS graphics. So I swapped off for just a Trident one meg board. And since that's not a true video accelerator, 3D Mark 99 will only run with the Voodoo. But I wasted about 40 minutes trying to figure out what the heck was going on with the Cyrex chip. I still don't know. Everything's working okay except with the onboard AGP graphics. So there I am. You know, maybe I didn't buy this board with the Cyrex chip. This might have been the board that when I bought it, I had my AMD K6 233. So I had my AMD K6 233, which I overclocked to 300 on this board. That's right. So where did I get the Cyrex chip? Oh, I've had it, but I don't recall what board I used to use with it. Um, I've got to dig deep in the old memory banks. But anyways, we're, we're only going to have one set of runs from the Cyrex, and that'll be on the Voodoo 2 card. And like I said, we're definitely CPU limited with all of these tests. So just wanted to give you a quick update while I continue to test. All right, sports fans, when life gives you lemons, you make motherboard lemonade. The GA5 s dash mm motherboard just does not like the cyrex 6x86 166 it is just not like it i got some benchmarks run with the voodoo 2 but it came out to like three cpu marks or five cpu 3d marks well that's obviously not right so i am going 
back to my TX97 LE motherboard. It does not have onboard anything, essentially. I mean, it has IDE, uh, floppy. It takes both times of memory, and I'm going to keep the SD RAM in there, the 64 meg stick. And I will use the Trident video card, and then I will put in the Voodoo 2, and it is a socket 7, and I will adjust the jumpers for the Cyrex. And I double-checked, according to this motherboard, for any of you who are aficionados of retro, let me state that it is so helpful sometimes to have the original motherboard manual, or at least be able to find it. So, in order for this Cyrex chip to work, it must be revision 2.7 or later, and what I have to do is I have to look on the inner side of the chip and I want, it should read G8DC blah 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 or later. So this chip reads, let's focus people. Don't know if you guys can read that. GK. It reads GK. So we've got GK 8A. Excuse me, G8KA. Good Lord. G8KA. So G8KA is later than GADC. So I am going to assume this motherboard can handle it. I am going to put it in the ZIF socket. And then I am going to wander through all of these lovely jumpers and get everything up and running. Then I'm going to reinstall Win98 because it's a different motherboard chipset and Win98 just hates it to death when you switch motherboards without reinstalling the software. So I'll get Win98 reinstalled with the bare bones. I did manage to hook up USB on this older motherboard. It does have a header for it. So we do have USB on a little you know, the test bench is tough sometimes because it's hard to fit everything on there, but we've got USB, so we should be good for USB. I'll get everything up and running, and we'll do some benchmarks again. I will most likely leave the original banks benchmarks as is, and then I'll probably just do another series on just this motherboard and battle at 166 with just this motherboard. But let's see what results the other motherboard gives us. I mean, the more the merrier when it comes to retro motherboard testing, right? All right, folks, hang in there, and we'll see if we can't get this done.
And here we have the final benchmarks with both motherboards and all four chips. As we can see with the Gigabyte board using the SIS AGP, we get the same CPU marks using the AGP or the Voodoo 2. So that's to be expected as we're only actually testing the raw CPU speed. And here we see the Pentium with MMX pulling ahead of the Pentium with the AMD falling um, not that far behind those two. And then we've got the problems we had with the Cyrex chip. Um, the Cyrex chip just did not really work on any of these benchmarks, which I have no idea. Maybe I'll do a little more research and put something out about that. Um, I know that the TX97 LE motherboard didn't seem to have an issue with the Cyrex, but the numbers are definitely, shall I say, off. Um, we can refer back to the CPU DOS bench that we did run that shows the Cyrex and the K6 well ahead of the Pentium chips. And that might be due to some optimizations within them as far as running regular workloads. Um, but then the Cyrex, excuse me, the AMD at the same time is able to handle the 3D much better than the Cyrex uh, and is up there with the Pentiums. Now looking at the actual Voodoo 2 CPU, excuse me, the Voodoo 2 3D marks, um, again we see the Pentium with MMX ahead of the Pentium, which itself is ahead of the K6, and then of course we have the Cyrex, which really it's just not benchmarking correctly. And then we can see the difference between the motherboards. It looks like the TX97 LE has overall faster CPU speed and that translates also into faster Voodoo 2 speed. So we've got a motherboard that seems to be a little more advanced or at least better optimized I should say. Uh, it doesn't look like it's carrying as much let's say overload as far as with the built-in AGP graphics and and the chipset differences in that. Um, you know, there's a lot of variables in play with these, but I just wanted to do this. I thought it'd be fun to run the four chips. So I think, you know, take time, study the benchmark results, come up to your own opinions. And at the end of the day, though, we're looking at the Pentium with MMX running ahead of the regular Pentium, running ahead of the AMD K6. And while the Cyrex did complete the benchmarks and the tests, I'm not sure why 3D Mark just, at least 3D Mark 99 Max, just basically has no love of this Cyrex chip. Uh, I really appreciate everyone watching. It um, was a labor, a labor of love, I suppose so, a labor of retro computer equipment to get all of this up and running and to get the benchmarks done finally. Um, I will reference my shorts feed. Um, at the end of this video because that's where I go over the individual chips involved and the individual motherboards on a one-on-one -on -one basis in case you like to see them uh, just stand alone with a little greater detail.